afternoon, everyone. What if you had the power to change the world and erase all your fears? Can we create a place for all of us to live in peace? Today, I want to talk to you about how this world can be transformed from a place of hatred, conflict, and fear to a positive space for joy, fulfillment, and equality. His Excellency Marcello Suarez Salvia, ISPS Board of Directors, Director Helen Brocklesby, students, teachers, and parents. I am honored to celebrate and support the United Nations Declaration of 2021 as a year of peace and trust, a noble goal that we can achieve. This is the story of my journey. About 30 years ago, I turned my home into a prison. As a single mother with two small children, I lived in fear of the world around me, afraid of crime and the acts of violence that had targeted my family. I shut myself off from the world, except to go to work as a journalist and an English teacher at ISPS. Because I couldn't imagine a life with peace and trust, I installed four layers of metal bars burglar proofing my home. For 17 years, I lived as a victim. 13 years ago, about the time I became the head librarian at ISPS, a friend of mine, Gwen Pope, told me the youth training center desperately needed an English teacher for teenage boys who had been incarcerated for violent crimes. By this time, I didn't want to live like a victim any longer. I wanted to understand what made teenagers and young men so angry and violent. I took the volunteer job at YTC. Your guidance counselor, Louis Moore, rallied teachers around me to buy books for the class. Here is what I saw behind bars at YTC. I saw teenagers eager to read books and learn, desperate for love and understanding. They showed up for my classes, often hungry for food as well as knowledge. I learned they were redeemable in spite of the awful things they had done. I grew to love them because I knew in prison I was the only mother they had, and I knew they wanted to re-enter the free world as young men worthy of respect. But that wasn't enough for me. I also needed to understand and trust the police. My bitterness towards them knew no boundaries because I felt they did nothing to protect my family from crime. Not many people know this, but at the same time I started my prison work, I began working with the canine police, writing their history so that we could understand crime from the police dog's perspective. I traded the isolation of my own home for the isolation of teaching in prison and an isolated spot on the Karani Canine Police Compound where I played with retired police dogs whenever I got the chance. From the time I stepped into prison, I promised inmates their voices would be heard because I believed there could be no peace and trust in this country unless we heard everyone's voice. The story of my academic journey with these troubled, violent teens is documented in my book, Wishing for Wings. It touched so many people. I received financial assistance from individuals, book clubs, businesses, the U.S. Embassy, NGOs, and the National Honor Society in this school. I started the Wishing for Wings Foundation and followed my teenagers into adult prison because it takes 10 to 12 years for capital crime cases to be heard in our courts. All the financial and moral support I received came from the story of those seven teenagers in Wishing for Wings. I described them as outcasts, the forgotten boys of Trinidad and Tobago who were desperate for hope. They wanted their stories to be told because they wanted to contribute to peace and trust in this country. Those teenagers told me to write whatever I wanted about them. They said, we can take people's anger or hate. They, they had only one request, we don't want pity. After YTC, the first prison I worked in was Port of Spain prison, a place where buckets and newspapers replace running water or toilets in the cells, a place where inmates and myself hurdled rats to get to class. We listened to the rats running around the kitchen behind the classroom. In Port of Spain prison, Golden Grove prison, and Remand prison, 
I ran skill-based programs, PBS furniture making, decorative tiling, and certified bartering classes, so that poor men re-entering society would not have to turn to crime or depend on people who had always rejected them. I cried at our first certified barbering graduation when young men stood up and sang Prison Walls by Jah Cure. They sang, Prison Ain't No Better Roses, but I swear I can be a better man. In Port of Spain Prison, we made light out of darkness. The NGO Children's Ark made a library for me so that inmates could read to their children. Inmates tore down death row cells to make my dream of a prison library come true. Inmates from Carrera, who once lived in those death row cells, created the artwork on the walls. This project, this library in Port of Spain prison, I dreamed of while I was working as your librarian at ISPS. We started a debate team in my Port of Spain prison English class that proved so successful we introduced debate teams in all 10 prisons in this country. We debated the University of Trinidad and Tobago, and then we debated prison officers in Port of Spain City Hall. The inmates won the debates. Their voices were heard on the news, and they rang out loud and clear throughout this country. Inmates and I proved that we could work together regardless of age, race, socioeconomic status, or religion. I experienced two earthquakes in prison, including that big scary one from a couple of years ago. Inmates shielded me to protect my life. The same people I once feared were now determined to save me from harm. During this pandemic, I worked hard to keep inmates safe from COVID-19 by providing items like bleach, hand sanitizer, and masks. Through the NGO SIWA and through Gary Abood, I brought in 30,000 masks for inmates and officers. So you see, we can take control of our lives and make a difference. I think of history and its many marches for freedom, civil rights, and redemption. I think of Mahatma Gandhi's march from Ahmedabad to the Arabian Sea in 1930, and Martin Luther King's march in Mon Montgomery, Alabama in 1965. I think of a former Trinidadian police officer, Wayne Hayne, who was instrumental in transforming Rwanda after its genocide in 1994. I think of my prison and police work, and I think of students in this school making hand sanitizer for my inmates last year and making packages of essential supplies and clothes for destitute inmates. As I stand here today, surrounded by all these flags representing your countries, I imagine the difference you will make as you embark on service learning projects this year. I see you back home in your country someday making a difference. You represent the world, and each one of you can make an impact. You can find trust in the people you mistrust. You will discover how powerful your voice can be and how the people you fear or hate can rally behind you if you change your point of view. During the pandemic, the canine police offered me an escape and a sanctuary to play with their puppies. Everywhere I turn now, there is light and hope and joy and support from those I once feared or hated. This is a year designated by the United Nations as a year of peace and trust. They both go hand in hand. You can't have one without the other. Peace and trust begin with taking that first step out of your house and out of your comfort zone. You enter the world to shed your fears, build momentum, and collaborate. Find your mission. Believe you are powerful. Together we can change the world. I am proud to be part of your community and part of this country. As civil rights activist, writer, and librarian, Audre Lorde said, when I dare to be powerful, to use my strength in the service of my vision, then it becomes less and less important whether I am afraid. I believe that with all my heart. Thank you.